So the prescribed burn I was on was Elkhorn 2 incident. That resulted in a conversion to a wildfire. What was going to be a couple of days with me and my engine turned into two weeks and teams. And so driving away from that incident, um, I still, yeah, I still remember like looking at the column in the rear view and just being really, really angry about everything that had transpired. Going down to Vegas, the rumor mill hit that there was going to be an investigation. I was the holding boss. So I was like, if I'm not going to get fired, because I'm you're the holding boss, fire escaped. So I didn't do my job. So either I was going to get fired or disciplinary action I was expecting. I expected a lot of, you should have done this, you should have done this, you should have said this. So when I heard we were getting ready for the review, I, I was ready to go in. I wasn't going to go down lightly. <laughs> I was ready to, to fight. I remember like when you walked in, the, the burn boss, the burn boss trainee, the two firing bosses were there, some of the helicopter people, and I just remember like avoiding eye contact. There was just a lot of tension in the room. And I don't know what, still to this day, I think back, I don't remember what they did, but the tension started to leave the room as people just started kind of talking, well, I was here, I was here, I was there. And we just started kind of to talk on our way through it. And so they started with the light and easy questions and then it dove down into it and started to hear what people were seeing through their eyes. And that's when I started getting from angry to, oh, and it's not, this is like one of my quotes I love to use. It wasn't to have an agreement, you know, not to agree with what each other did, but it was just more to understand what people were seeing. Um, and I just remember walking out of that and standing on the back porch of the district office with like a couple of people like a few hours earlier, I, I wouldn't have wanted to anywhere be near. And we just looked at each other and we're like, holy crap, what just happened? Like that was amazing. Um, there was lots of things I heard, and they heard me say that they were like, I just didn't understand why you wanted to do X. What you've just heard is a holding boss's experience with the Facilitated Learning Analysis, or FLA, process. The Forest Service uses a Facilitated Learning Analysis, or FLA, to learn from incidents with unintended outcomes, such as accidents or injuries. An FLA may be basic or complex, depending on the incident. Its basic purpose is to help those directly involved in the event learn and understand what happened and then share those lessons with others. If needed, a learning review can provide a deeper look and an avenue to provide recommendations through the use of focus groups and additional perspectives. In this video, you'll learn more about the FLA process, the history of accident investigations, what to expect during an FLA, how stories are critical to the FLA process, and where to find FLA reports. An FLA is a process that we use to get at the deeper understanding of what occurred after an unintended outcome. I think it's really the larger purposes here are, are number one, to make sure that we learn from it, that we mine this unexpected incident for its learning potential. We don't do FLAs when things turn out the way we thought they would. There's not much learning there. That's what we already thought would happen. We do FLAs when something unexpected happens. And those are rich opportunities for learning. So that's one of our core purposes, is to learn. So if we have a, a vehicle accident rollover, whatever the case was, we are going to use that as a tool. And so what is an FLA around a vehicle accident? It's a process that we go through to learn about what happened with that employee, the sense making that went into the actions that led to that final outcome, and then also the, the conditions that were upstream that put the employee in that vehicle. So this is one of my favorite quotes from Sidney Decker uh, related to, to just culture and, and causality. There is almost no human action or decision that cannot be made to look flawed and less sensible in the misleading light of hindsight. 
it's kind of crazy, but uh, what we've looked at, in, you know, in the history of accident reviews, it seems that whenever you try to figure out what the cause is, you almost inevitably end up at the person who is approximately closest to the event, the person who was right there. They usually end up being the least powerful person in the system. You know, they're the ones that everybody else tells what to do. They have the least amount of power, and yet somehow, some way, everything's their fault. Uh, what we found, though, is anytime you hold up cause, it very quickly translates into blame. So if you say this is the cause, it, it's a very short distance from there to, well, this is the person that, you know, the reason that cause happened is because this person did such and such. Before we really got into FLAs, we'd been on a long-term trajectory towards finding whoever made the mistake and punishing them. If somebody got hurt, it was because either someone had violated a rule, or in some cases, we didn't have a rule to explain how to do this safely. The problem is, according to that philosophy, the problem is people are breaking the rules. And if we can just stop them from breaking the rules, shut that down, catch the, the bad guys, we can prevent accidents. And it didn't work. It didn't prevent accidents, but it did do some interesting other things, like it shut down reporting. We found that I think pretty much everybody involved with the Forest Service in accident reviews over the last 15 years would agree that the moment you start trying to figure out what the cause is, people start feeling defensive like you're blaming them, and then they stop talking. And information is the lifeblood of safety, right? So if you cut off that information flow, you're not going to learn what happened, and then you can't figure out what to do to prevent it in the future. Bottom line is that you can either learn or you can punish, but you can't do both at the same time. Uh, the Forest Service has learned that the hard way. But fires are dynamic environments. The forests are dynamic environments. A trail crew going out and doing maintenance on a trail, that's a dynamic environment. You can't simplify the whole system down to a strict cause-effect relationship that leads to all we need to do is put in a bunch, an, an extra piece of safety equipment or an extra rule here, and it will engineer itself out of an accident. I think we've come a huge distance over the last 10, 15 years, really a huge distance. And I think we now routinely approach accidents from a learning perspective. What were they thinking? Why did this make sense to them? Why did they think this was the right thing to do? And if you can approach it from that perspective, you can learn. And I think that's a really powerful shift. And I think it's up and down throughout the agency. Um, so you have, I mean, because it's always a, a push me, pull you between folks at every level of supervision and leadership. Um, and I think more often than not today, each of the layers will look not to figure out who's to blame, not to shift blame on it wasn't my fault, it was somebody else's, but to say, how can we make sense of this? How can we share each other's stories? And how can we learn what really happened? You know, it's a shift in the culture, and it's been a really long, hard process to shift the culture to the just culture of, hey, I had an accident, and this is what I learned from it, and actually the boots on the ground stepping up and saying, hey, we had an accident, and having ownership in, in an unintended outcome. Just culture is a culture that, uh, that values the learning and the ability to uh, be accountable for our own actions and learn from those actions and translate those actions in a way that others can learn from them um, as the most valuable thing that comes from an incident or an accident. To me, that's a true just culture, that's self-accountability. And to me, uh, there's no other thing in the agency really that describes accountability in a better way to me. It's not being held accountable, it's not being held to blame. It is about being accountable and owning that. But the most important thing is the learning. I see it from my perspective that a just culture leads to a reporting culture. And reporting culture leads to a trust culture and this trust culture leads to a learning culture, which is really what our agency is trying to achieve. Shifting to a, to a true learning culture that values the learning over the blame.
but I'll just say that we started off this FLA process uh, assuring people that there would be no administrative punitive actions. And what that means in practice is that uh, employees involved in an accident can feel free and should feel free to share openly uh, what, what actually happened, what, how they made their decisions. If they made mistakes, they can talk about it. As well as administrators, if, uh, if they were involved in the accident directly, they would certainly be able to talk about it. But also, what is their context? How, how did they set the stage for this accident? I think part of it is that the Forest Service is really making an effort to change how we address things that don't go as we expect them. And the only way that we can do that is to have really honest conversations about what's really happening. We can't as an agency or as a, as a tribe of people say, oh, no, no, we're different now, you can trust us. We have to build trust with our people one action at a time, one response at a time. The single most important time for a leader in this organization or any organization on how they demonstrate to their employees if they're vectoring towards learning or towards punishment or away from learning is the moments immediately following a bad accident or a tragedy. That's the single most important time as a supervisor. Your employees are watching you so close right at that point. They are learning the way you're gonna respond and that is the cr most critical time. And as individual supervisors, first line supervisors all the way up to the chief, um, people are paying um, extremely close attention to your actions immediately following a tragedy. Stories are really how we learn. It's, uh, it would, it's what makes an event real uh, in our own minds. It's one thing to know what happened, you know, the facts or the actions that occurred. But when we tell a story and we uh, learn the context about when these actions were happening, what, what also was going on, what were people thinking, what were they seeing, what were they feeling, hearing, putting all that together uh, helps us remember. It helps us really understand more what they were going through. And that's where we learn, is when we, we are able to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else. That's when we really start to learn those lessons ourselves through the vicarious experience of somebody else. Often people think that the group dialogue is to get everybody to agree on what happened. And that's pretty critical that that's not the objective at all. The group dialogue or the sense-making phases for, for FLAs is you don't have to agree. It's not a kumbaya. Um, it's just more here's the story. It's, it's kind of what would happen after hours before you know, you're sitting around the warming fire and, and talking about things. That's what you're trying to get is just people sharing their, their perspectives. But it's still your story, your, your thoughts. Right? You don't have to adopt someone else's. Part of the FLA process acknowledges that we have different perspectives and that um, sometimes you just can't resolve those differences, that they're both valid. But when we're writing things or putting the story together, it's okay to say that there's two different perspectives. This person saw this and this person saw this, and there doesn't have to be a resolution to that. Um, there can be those two different things and they can both be present and they kind of are woven together into the story. This, the story is how, in the end, we hope to instill the learning or the changed behavior or the change in culture. And so that's, I think, the big picture. Accountability is more about owning decisions and being able to share the context for why you made those decisions. And sometimes those decisions are flawed. Sometimes that accountability means owning that I made a flawed decision and here's what I learned from it. And that next piece of accountability is not just talking openly about what happened from your perspective and telling your story, but actually taking the next step and saying, and here's what I would do differently. I do think it's important for the hosting unit 
to first ask yourself, is an FLA what you want? Do you want to learn from this? And then if the answer is yes, and you're gonna have a team come in, how do you prepare yourself for that team coming? You wanna manage expectations so that people know what, what's gonna happen. What's the interview experience gonna be like? How are these lessons gonna be shared? Why is it worth it to tell your story? Is it gonna to contribute to learning elsewhere? The team will show up and have a conversation with the delegating official at whichever level that is, and in briefing real quick and have a delegation of authority in their hand and uh, have some conversations about maybe some things to look at. So then the team will kind of set up what they want to do and then they'll start doing some interviews. And if I'm running an FLA or part of an FLA team, I want to make sure as the least impact on the, on the unit as possible. And then come back in and, you know, if there's multiple interviews going on, the team will get together and put all that together and start developing the story to be told. And uh, be some follow-up interviews, closing some of the gaps, um, filling some of the holes that come up and, okay, so we're not really clear. You said this, and walk me through that and a little bit more explanation through that. And um, we're not looking for the, why did you do that? But make some sense out of it for some of the folks out there that are gonna be reading the report and make some good sense out of it. And, Lessons learned, what did you learn? Now we can use hindsight and what did you learn? What are you gonna do different next time? And get that out to the rest of the community. The goal is I'm not expecting to find out something in particular, but really I just wanna hear what happened from your perspective. Yeah, the, the intention is not to grill anybody. So one of the things that we do as a, as a foundational principle of the FLA, is we bring everybody that was involved together to talk about their experience. And, uh, and this is a part of the facilitated dialogue. Uh, comes from a book called uh, Thinking Together. And it's, uh, it's like the old metaphor of bringing several people who are wearing blindfolds to touch an elephant. And they're touching different parts. And once they hear other people talk about their parts of the story, it all tends to make sense. And you actually get a truer, more accurate representation of what actually happened. Start developing a written report. And it's going to be extremely draft. And I'll tell you, it goes through multiple versions of draft. And then we get a pretty rough draft that the team's feeling comfortable with. And we'll call the trail crew back up or the the fire crew, whatever, like, hey, you guys available to, to read what we've got written down. One of the ways that we can encourage that, that honesty is to let them know that they're going to be a participant through the whole process. You know, we're not going to surprise them with something at the end um, that they've never seen before. So when we have a finished product, they're going to see it. They're going to review it before we send it out real success that we've had in this that's become a core principle of FLAs <clears throat> is that before we will publish the report or however we're disseminating the story, we will read it back to the participants. So those people who were involved in uh, the event have, have shared their story. Many times they've gone back out to the site where it happened or uh, discussed what happened over a sand table uh, or in a Google Earth simulation. And, uh, and so we got all their stories, we analyze it and synthesize it and put a, a timeline to it, uh, listen to, uh, gather all the other evidence and, uh, and then write up the story. And then we'll read it back to all the participants for validation to make sure that it's accurate. Once you get a final product given to the delegating official, the line officer has for a recommendation to have it posted. And, uh, so then it, then it gets posted at whichever website is appropriate for the, for the event that occurred. I think one, one of the things people uh, are sometimes frustrated about is this idea that we keep having the same accident. We have a dozer rollover in one region and a very similar accident in another. If we do an FLA here, perhaps there's the belief that we do an FLA on this event, we write it down, and that's going to prevent you know, all similar accidents. And I think that's a tough bar, a tall bar to reach. What we want is learning from this report. We don't want a single data point. With lots and lots of FLAs, RLSs and CRPs, uh, we can make some good generalizations about some risk in our system that we're not appreciating and make some systematic enterprise level changes. But not from one accident. One accident is just one data point.
Part of what my office does is uh, what we're doing right now, a big project we're working is come, uh, on is called the Meta Review. We're taking, we took a 406 different FLAs that exist on the Lessons Learned site and we put them together and we tried to do what's called a condition mapping exercise and try to figure out these bigger, broader patterns. And, and that's where we feel like the recommendations make more sense, right? Let's get a bunch of um, stories of what happened and then let's see if there's a pattern embedded within those stories, and then let's come up, come up with a recommendation that addresses that pattern. For the people that were directly involved in the accident, uh, going through the FLA process, they have the most powerful, concentrated dose of learning that comes out of that. Their peers, their associates and friends and families kind of have that second level because they, they were vicariously in, into their story and, and care about those people so much. And then outside of that is p the other people who are uh, sort of in their peers. Other, if the accident was an engine mishap, then other engine operators can, uh, can see themselves in that story and can vicariously become part of that learning. Um, and then <clears throat> if, if we do all this right, the agency administrators, the people who uh, design the training, the people who set the budget, who, who are really responsible for all of the, all of the tensions with, that we have between protection and production, uh, they can see that they're, they're somewhat accountable in this event as well. So uh, one of the most central things the Lessons Learned Center does is we, uh, when, when uh, an FLA is completed, uh, through various channels, the FLAs will come to the Lessons Learned Center and we post them uh, on in what we call the Incident Review Database. It's a collection of all kinds of reviews, including FLAs. The Forest Service the Safety SharePoint site, where a whole bunch of FLAs are there for non-fire, recreation, trails, timber, wildlife, um, CIO type stuff. FLAs, they're at the SharePoint site for safety, but the non-fire stuff is internal, the safety SharePoint site, hosted through the WO, safety program, risk management program, and there's hundreds of them on there. Of And this is the stuff you really don't hear about because it's not getting the publicity of fire. I think this is a really powerful tool. The FLA process is a very powerful tool. Uh, it takes a commitment on all all sides, leadership, uh, and, and the folks that were involved with whatever we happen to be looking at. Um, but that commitment needs to come with an understanding that, one, that this is about, we value learning, and this is about the learning over punishing somebody for an outcome. But what I hope is different at the end of the day is that uh, our, our folks come out of it knowing that the agency was fully supportive of our, of our people fully supportive and uh, did their best to, you know, try to make sure that their experience wasn't more negative than it needed to be and that they feel like they came out trusting the agency that they work for. And I think that's, that's a really good step in the right direction. We're on the right path, but um, it's a journey and the journey is intended to be a continual journey, right? So there is no, there is no final destination. Truth is we're going to continue to ask people to do risky work and we're going to prepare them the best we can and it's our responsibility to learn everything we can from every outcome, good and bad, to help prepare them.